Evidence of 10,000 years of history has been unearthed in Cornwall. The finds were discovered by the County Council's Cornwall Archaeological Unit during roadworks. Among the discoveries were tool preparation areas from the Mesolithic period, a Bronze Age burial mound, and evidence of Roman road construction. The team are now approaching the final piece of fieldwork of the archaeological mitigation programme associated with the construction of the A30 Chiverton to Carland Crossroad upgrade and are now able to share the initial results of the project which started in the summer of 2020. Archaeological investigations have been completed in 16 separate areas, each a large project in its own right, and these included four full excavation areas, 22 strip mat sample excavations, 19 watching briefs, two flint scatter recording areas, two paleo-environmental sampling areas, and two historic building records. The remains encountered span 10,000 years of history, from the first Mesolithic hunter-gatherers repopulating the landscape following the end of the last ice age, to relics of the Cold War. At Ventonteague, just west of Carland Cross, the team found a huge scatter of flint tools and waste, marking an area where people had gathered for millennia to prepare tools from flint pebbles carried up from the north coast, which at that time would have been 10 or 20 miles further north than the current coastline. By collecting the flint using innovative sampling methods, archaeologists were able to recover around 100,000 pieces of flint from this one area, and are in the process of also recovering a sizeable collection of worked slate tools, slate beads, daub, and hazelnut shells. Much of this would have gone unnoticed without the sampling techniques used, experts say. Intriguingly, the scatter was associated with a number of hollows and posthole features that are thought to represent structures used by the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers that were napping the flint 10,000 to 6,000 years ago. The subsequent Neolithic period saw the introduction of pottery and agriculture. The team found isolated pits containing pottery throughout the scheme, but more significantly identified a circular structure built of stakes enclosing an area containing a pit full of flint nodules. By this time, people were occasionally using flint imported from the chalk of East Devon, possibly because of large nodular pieces which could produce bigger tools, or because its distinctive colour was socially valued. Each one had at least one flake removed from it, perhaps a form of assaying or testing the flint for quality. This cachet of valuable imported flint had seemingly been stashed within a building and then abandoned for nearly 6,000 years. The early Bronze Age saw the introduction of metalwork and the construction of round barrows, largely on highly visible higher ground. The team excavated one barrow close to Carland Cross at Higher Ennis, high on the ridge that runs west from there, but also several in lower ground, close to Ennis and Ventonteague, and possibly also at Travalso near Zela. The only one of these containing a burial was at Higher Ennis, where cremated remains were found in an unusual urn that appeared to have elements of a style more usual further east in Britain, which was suggested as a possible visitor to Cornwall. One of the Ventonteague barrows also contained a whole urn, this time without human remains. Also found were whole Bronze Age urns from a number of pits, three at Nancaro, Marazanvos, and one from a roundhouse at Travalso. The Bronze Age saw the introduction of more substantial roundhouses, stone-walled and set in hollows. The team excavated one of these at Travalso, along with what they described as a more ephemeral post-ring structure nearby. Both contained substantial quantities of Trevisca ware, the pottery prevalent in Cornwall at that time, as well as a bronze-socketed hammer from one building, and a stone mould from a bronze object, possibly a razor, from the other. Another roundhouse from Marazanvos was a much larger structure and contained evidence for a range of industrial processes, including possible metalworking. Roundhouse building continued into the Iron Age, and the team found a few examples at Tol Grogan at the western end of Zela. These seem to be contemporary with a field system that aerial mapping showed to be associated with a nearby round, a fortified enclosure known to be prevalent in Cornwall throughout the late Iron Age and Roman periods. The scheme crossed the ditch of one of these rounds at Travalso. It was quite substantial, up to three metres deep and five metres wide. Although there was not the chance to see much of the interior of the round, the team did identify three or four oval Romano-British houses nearby. One type of feature cropped up throughout the scheme in a variety of forms. At Carland Cross to the east and Chibuka and Four Burrows to the west, archaeologists found long lines of pits, which the team are interpreting as borrow pits, used to excavate stone for road surfacing. 
It takes a great deal of social organisation to coordinate road building on this scale, and elsewhere these pits have been taken to imply Roman involvement. At Marazanvos, the team found old sections of road with ditches either side to carry water away from the carriageway. Here it could be seen that the old section of road lined up with part of the present A30, which had presumably been diverted to the north of Marazanvos at some point. Historians know this happened a long time ago, as the parish boundary, usually laid out in the early medieval period pre-1066, follows the diverted A30, and field boundaries either side of it are not cut by the diverted road, therefore the original road is likely to be Roman, or even earlier. Finds from the medieval period, other than field boundary ditches, were sparse, probably reflecting the fact that most medieval settlements survive as the farms and villages present today. The team did uncover some evidence for Marazamvos being more densely populated in the Middle Ages than it is now, with metalworking pits, small laid-out garden plots, and a well being amongst the features identified. Much the same could be said of the post-medieval period. The only significant remains found from this period were offices, leets and buddles associated with the short-lived Wheel Ennis, an unsuccessful attempt to mine lead, opened in 1851 and closed the following year. However, some remains were found dating to the Second World War. Right next to the Chibuka Junction, the team uncovered the remains of 50 or so huts and a blacksmith's forge forming the remains of a United States Army base in use from 1943 up until D-Day in June 1944. It had been thought that the site might have been the base for the group of the 29th Infantry Division that landed on Omaha Beach on D-Day, but subsequent investigations, including contact with the divisional Facebook page administrator in the US, suggested that the base was a regional supply depot attached to many divisions, providing a vehicle park and repairs, an ammunition dump and an ordnance depot. The team found many artefacts, including personal effects like a tube of toothpaste, broken radios, enamel mugs and a large number of beer bottles. At Higher Ennis, the remains of foxholes were discovered that form part of a home guard defensive position covering Newlyn Downs in the event of a German invasion from the north coast of Perimporth or Holywell. This same area was subsequently used as an aircraft observation post and then, in the 1950s, as the location for the Royal Observer Corps observation post. This consisted of an underground bunker housing two people that would have reported back to a command centre in Truro in the event of a nuclear attack at St Morgan, measuring blast intensity and radiation levels, among other things. The team were able to show former members of the crew around the site. Sadly, the bunker had been decommissioned in the 1990s, and what remained was flooded and rat-infested. Councillor Martin Olvey, Cornwall Council's cabinet member with responsibility for the archaeology service, said, As ever, the team has worked brilliantly to discover, identify and interpret a wealth of material, which gives us a real insight into the way people lived across so many periods. Fascinating discoveries indeed. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description or via YouTube Super Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.